Welcome once again to The Breakfast, and it's time for us to share with you a little bits and details of what happened today in history. We're going back to Togo in 1963, the 13th of January. A man named Silvanus Olimpio, I think that's how it's pronounced, was killed today after the very first, and it's also rumored as one of the very first uh, coup d'etats that took place in Africa. Uh, the coup leaders, Emmanuel Bojelo, Etienne Ayadema, and uh, Kleba Dojo took over government buildings and arrested uh, Togo's first president, Silvanus Olimpio, outside, or rather, you know, in that, um, that uh, morning, he was eventually found dead right outside the uh, American embassy in Lume. Uh, it started on the morning of the 13th with gunshots uh, being heard all around. And by dawn, President Olympi Olympio, um, I'm really hoping I'm pronouncing it right, uh, Silvanus Olympio was found dead that morning. There's very, very uh, sad um, 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 stories from his wife and family members about how he was killed and um, how it all took place. Although the army totally disagrees and says that he was only shot because he was trying to escape our, um, arrest. But anyway, um, in that morning and in uh, the process of the coup d'etat that took place that day, lots of the ministers of the Togolese government were arrested, except the interior and information minister. They were the only ones who uh, survived or who you know, weren't arrested. Um, there's many, many reasons that were also given, but the biggest ones were economic um, reasons, and of course uh, they uh, would always run towards uh, a failing economy and corruption as reasons for a coup. We've had this so many times in coups that have taken place in Africa, including here in Nigeria. There's always that blame of corruption and, you know, failing economy uh, as uh, reasons why a coup uh, took place. Um, later, in May 1963, elections were held and Nicolas Gronitsky and Antoine uh, Mechi were both elected as president and vice president. Uh, there was also some controversy about the role of the Ghanaian president, then Kwame Nkrumah, uh, who, you know, rumors have it, was also impl implicated in the death of uh, Silvanus Olimpio. Uh, the rumors back then was that the both presidents had issues with um, uh, the eastern part of Togo, which was, I um, mean, um, it was a former German um, um, uh, territory. And so there was confusions because Ghana um, wanted Togo to be a part of, you know, to, to join them and be a part of Ghana, while the president of Togo disagreed and said, no, this little area here that we're fighting over should remain a part of Togo. And um, from there, they began to have issues. And, you know, rumors have it that Kwame Nkrumah was part of the people who, uh, um, of course, um, pushed and led to the death and the coup that happened in Togo on this day in 1963. Not proven because investigations were eventually shut down after a while. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I really enjoyed that trip, you know, to history. And uh, still talking about history today in history, 1999, what happened on January 13th was that Michael Jordan retired for a second time. Now, he was a, you know, basketball superstar of the National Basketball Association. He, you know, announced his retirement from professional basketball for the second time, and that was in front of a crowd at the Chicago's United Center. Well, Jordan had an outstanding career, but he left the University of North Carolina after his junior year when he was selected by the Chicago Bulls as the third overall pick in the first round of the 1984 NBA draft. In his 12 full seasons with the Bulls, Jordan was voted uh, the NBA's most valuable player five times. He also won six NBA Finals MVP award, one for each final he played uh, with the Bulls. Jordan's second retirement announced in 1999 in January. He, you know, he came after a bitter tension between the general manager, Jerry Cruz, and Coach Jackson, which uh, resulted in Jackson leaving uh, Chicago. Now, the interesting thing about Michael B. Jordan's uh, second retirement was that he said that uh, he decided to retire because he had lost the drive and the desire that was necessary, you know, to play, a, to play, the, uh, to play basketball and that uh, he needed to spend more time with his family. Now, eventually, in January 2000, he became part owner and president of the basketball operations of the Washington Wizards. It was a struggling NBA franchise. He got himself into playing shape, came out of retirement again, 
And then he eventually retired for the third and final time, April 16, 2003. So yes, that's what happened today in history uh, in 1999. It's mostly, you know, a, a lot of um, basketball royalty, you know, that comes to play or comes to mind when you hear about Michael Jordan. Uh, he, he, he is still seen as the greatest basketballer of all time. Uh, there's, of course, a new era where you have, uh, you know, the likes of LeBron James and, and um, I can't remember the other guy's name. Um, I'm not a huge basketball fan, <laughs> but you know, there's, there's this new era now, but you would never be able to really, really talk about basketball in the next, you know, 100 years without yes, always remembering yes. uh, the relevance of Michael Jordan. I think you made a mistake and called him Michael B. Jordan. That's the actor. Yes, the actor. Yes. <laughs> so, um, there's Shaquille O'Neal, there yes. is, uh, the, you know, the, um, uh, what's his name now? Uh, Magic Johnson. There's so many of them, you know, who have been, who have had phenomenal careers. But Michael Jordan would always be in anyone's top three greatest basketballers of all time. He would definitely make the top three. I'm not sure how they would be rated, uh, but very likely he would always be number one. Mm. Anyway. I guess that's, uh, that's it today in history, January 13th, 1999, and uh, the Togo coup. Yeah, 1963, uh, 13th of January also. We're now turning the pages of the conversation on The Breakfast this morning. We're going to be talking about the 2023 election, 2023 presidency, Ohaneze Indigo, the election of a new president general of the Social Cultural Group, and what would be the agenda for this group in the next few years. Do stay with us. <laughs> 